Before we bring coach up, uh, just a couple reminders uh, and update. Um, for videographers, um, TV stations, um, we had you being able to shoot from sections E and F. Uh, those sections are gonna be occupied by visiting fans moving forward. So that is kind of in the Southwest corner. So that would be those of you that are shooting Iowa towards Iowa basket in the first half. So we're asking you to shoot from sections J and K. That's on the opposite side, kind of where the student section used to be before pre COVID. So again, uh, sections E and F will be occupied by fans. So video videographers photo can shoot from sections J and K and uh, the doors for media open 90 minutes before tip off. So that'd be five o'clock local time for uh, North Carolina media that are on here. And we'll have coach on here in a second. All right. Good afternoon, coach. Can you hear me okay? That's you, Steve. All right. We'll go ahead and get started. As you have uh, participants, have you, as you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get to our questions for Coach McCaffrey. Our first question comes from Rick Brown. Go ahead, Rick. Rick, are you? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was muted. Um, all right, Coach, as you watched uh, Carolina play in the Maui event, what what jumped out uh, about them to you? You know, I, I think a lot of things, Rick. I mean, I'm very impressed with their personnel. Uh, you know, I think anytime you play against the Roy Williams coach team, they're going to play hard. They're going to defend. They're going to rebound. They're going to compete. They share the ball. Uh, but they've got a lot of size and they've got athletic guys on the wing and in the guard positions. So they're, they're a, and they're always going to be a team that challenges your team in every possible way. All right. Our next question comes from Don Doxy. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, Fran, I'm just wondering, you mentioned the other day that you're kind of stepping up in class. How do you, how do you deal with that in practice? I mean, you're dealing with much more size, much more quickness than in these first three games. You know what, Don? It, it, it's, not the, it's not anything that they don't know. I mean, they, they know who North Carolina is. They know the difference. Uh, you know, the challenge is typically to get our guys to know and understand how to compete the same way every game. 
and not to say, okay, you know, we have Western Illinois today, but we're really looking forward to the Carolina game. No, we you want to play Western Illinois. You want to play Carolina. You want to play Iowa state the same way. And, and we all know that there's challenges to that, especially when it's Carolina, you know, it's, it's one of the gold standard programs uh, in college basketball for a very long time. So, you know, you, they were able to watch the same games that you watch, the same games that I watch. They, they watched those Maui Invitational games. So they saw who played well and, you know, they saw some of the new guys and so forth. So they know the challenges that are in front of them. Next question comes from Scott Dodgerman. Uh, Fran, with that kind of size that they have and athletic ability, both on the bench, on, on the floor and to start the game and then off the bench, uh, what kind of plan do you have or you think you're going to have for Jack, Patrick, just to kind of match up that kind of size? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an important game for Jack, you know, because they're going to have two 6'10", 6'11", guys on the floor most of the time. Uh, you know, I think Patrick Keegan, you know, Connor will be fine and we can move him around. Uh, and I think when you look at our, you know, our, basically our top nine or our top 10, you know, nothing will change there. Uh, but I think getting Jack Nungy back and, and watching him assimilate into everything that we're doing so easily based on the incredibly difficult circumstances he faced is, is really been impressive and heartwarming in, in a lot of ways. But, you know, if you just focus on the basketball side of it, he's, he's a difference maker for us uh, against anybody, but especially when you're playing a team that has that many bigs. Our next question comes from David Eichholt. Yeah, Fran, you know, when people look at North Carolina, they've talked a lot about their front court heading into this season, but Caleb Love was probably one of the best shot creators in that 2020 class. Uh, can you just give us a scouting breakdown of what you've seen about Caleb? Yeah, he's a terrific player. Uh, you know, I think their their guard core is, is a talented group. Uh, you know, he's a freshman who doesn't really play like a freshman. He's not afraid. Uh, at crunch time to make plays for himself or other people. He's always been that kind of player. You know, he can play fast. He can play in a half court. He's got size. You know, I think he, he's a guy that, uh, you know, I think he has a really good demeanor to play this game. Uh, he's a competitor, like I said. So, uh, you know, he's a guy that obviously has, our attention and anybody that's going to be on their schedule's attention. Next question comes from John Sears. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Fran, through the first three games, um, what have you liked defensively that your team has done? And then what have you maybe not liked that you need to get a little better? I, I think there's a lot of things that, that we look at and say uh, we, we could have been better at, you know, we, we, let Western Carolina go on, or Western Illinois go on a run. Uh, credit to them and their coaching staff and their players. You know, we, we got a little complacent there. I think trading baskets and then we missed a couple and they hit a couple. I think you want to be a little more consistent there. But I thought, you know, our our ability to to, to guard at the half court and to get our defense back which is obviously going to be critical in time you play North Carolina. Uh, our rebounding needs to be better than it was. Uh, and obviously we're playing arguably the, the best rebounding team there is. So that's something we have to improve on. But, you know, I think anytime you, you win three games by the totals that we did, you, you can't just say, okay, well, we took care of business. How do we how, how do we get better and and what did we do that was really good you know we had a game plan going in what did we like what didn't we like knowing that we've got a tough stretch coming up here three games this week uh, so uh, you know you go back you look at the film you show it to the guys and 
we've got a mature group that, that understands that and wants to get better. Reminder to raise your hand in the participants window if you have a question. Our next question comes from Mark Immert. Yeah, Fran, staying on that topic a little bit, uh, how do you think you are uh, better equipped on the uh, perimeter to uh, defend this year than maybe in years past? I think it's nothing more than, than you've got veteran guys that understand scouting reports. They understand you know, who's got the ball, you know, being in the gaps, how to play ball screens, uh, how to play in transition when there's more space, how to change into other defenses effectively. I think that really is what it comes down to. All right, go back to uh, Scott Docterman. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, Garrison Brooks is a little bit iffy. He hurt his ankle in Maui um, and kind of struggled to get back to practice. If he plays and plays a lot, how does he impact the game? And are you just – scouting him and, and using that scout basically that he is going to play? Yeah, we, we would expect him to play. Uh, if he doesn't play, they have a lot of ways they can go, obviously. Uh, but uh, he's been impressive. He was impressive last year. He's been impressive so far this year. You know, he, he really stays after it on the glass. Uh, he's got a really good low post game offensively. A great length. He's a you know rim protector, active, but he's also a veteran guy that you know he, he doesn't rattle. He just kind of keeps coming, you know, and that's why he's the preseason player of the year in that league. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Fran. Looking ahead a little bit, have you had any contact with Gonzaga about their issues there? Is there any reason for you to think that game might be in jeopardy at this point? No, I. I'm just thinking about North Carolina. And our next question comes from C.L. Brown. Go ahead, C.L. Hi, Fran. Uh, C.L. Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. Um, this is probably one of Roy's youngest teams that he's had since he's been uh, back in Chapel Hill. I was wondering from what you've seen, in what ways does that youth, has that youth translated on the court in terms of maybe you don't, maybe not what a typical Roy Williams team would would do, you're seeing kind of little differences in, in how much he can give them the system. You know, to tell you the truth, I mean, I, I haven't noticed a lot in terms of, okay, they're, they're different than, you know, you know, when Phil Ford was bringing it down as a senior, you know, obviously he was the national player of the year, but, you know, you have really talented guards. They're both freshmen to start. But I mean, you know, when I when I watch the film, they're they're running their stuff, uh, they're executing. I think what what the coaching staff wants. Yeah, you know, maybe there, there's an extra mistake or two, but I don't I don't view it as as being tentative by those guys. I think they've been they've been aggressive, they've been confident, and they played well. Uh, they recognize they they've got some talented guys in the front court. So there's a number of ways they can go. You know, they're going to crank it up defensively when they have to and, and try to create some offense with their defense. They've always done that. You know, so I'm, I'm seeing a team that, uh, you know, I think you know, you'd have to ask Roy, but, you know, I, I think he's got to be pleased with, with those guys trying to do what he's asking them to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll go back to John Sears. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Fran, we all knew about Luca coming into the, the season, preseason player of the year, but his numbers might even be better than people expected. Has he su surprised you at all with his play so far for three games? He has not, you know, but again, you know, the three teams that we played, while they're all, you know, teams, you know, starting with North Carolina Central, I think it's a team that probably expects to win their league. They wanted the last four years. Southern expect, expect, expects to contend. Western's a brand new program in terms of they flipped the whole roster, have a new coaching staff, but, but they didn't have the size that, that uh, Carolina has or the teams coming up on our schedule have. Uh, so Luca did exactly what you would have expected him to do. Uh, that said, you know, I, and I've said, you know, he, he can really shoot the ball outside. He's done that. And I think you're seeing a little more 
in his repertoire, whether it be the low post, the mid post, top of the key in the corner. You know, he's a guy that is equally effective pretty much wherever he is on the floor. You know, and our guys don't understand how to utilize him and how to get him the ball and then, you know, how to take care of themselves when they have to go score. We have time for just a couple more questions for coach. We'll go to uh, Scott Docterman. Yeah, Fran, is there a, an interest on your part just to see how your pieces all kind of flow together? As you mentioned, um, you played three good opponents before, but it, this is a higher tier and how they perform against this will give you kind of a precursor to the Big Ten uh, because you are throwing so many guys in. Do you think this is a, a good chance to just kind of see how these pieces fit together at different junctures of the game? I, I think that's true, Scott. I think, you know, if, if you go back to when, you know, the ACC Big Ten Challenge began, uh, I think that was kind of what everybody was thinking. You know, early in the season, you know, let's, let's play the best teams, not wait until after Christmas. So now, you know, even if it was a normal year, we'd be playing Carolina. We might be playing a Gavit game, obviously Iowa State. And then we play typically two December games in conference. So things have changed. And I think, and I think that's, that's for the better. You know, putting high-profile games early in the season to, you know, accentuate college basketball on television is really important. But to go back to the original part of your question, yes, it does early in the season give you an opportunity to see what we have, uh, who we can count on, what combinations of players work together. You know, that's why I think those first three games were important. You know, we had a unique lineup on the floor in the last game with some young guys in CJ that really you know, took that thing from six, 16 back to 30. So that was great. And I think we're all kind of doing the same thing this time of year. All right. I see no more, no further questions for Coach McCaffrey. So, Coach, thanks for your time today. Right. Thanks, guys. And we'll get uh, our first player today will be C.J. Frederick. Good afternoon, CJ. Can you hear me okay? Yes, good afternoon. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Again, media, as you have a question, please raise your hand in the participants window and we'll get to questions for CJ Frederick. Mark Emmert, our, our first question. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, CJ, you're going to start seeing some elite guards here uh, this month starting tomorrow, I guess. How does that, uh, as a competitor, how do you like that, yeah, especially on the defensive end? How do you think you're equipped to handle that? I'm extremely excited. Um, you know, like Coach says, um, you sign up to play these kind of games and you sign up to play these kind of players. Uh, so I'm extremely excited to play against some elite guards and uh, just get after it on both ends of the floor. How do you think your defense has improved in your time here? I think it's improved a lot. Um, you know, I come from a high school, Covington Catholic, under Coach Scott Roussats, where um, we really got answered on the defensive end. And I think that transition to here, um, I think as I've gotten stronger and quicker, that's allowed me to even take my defense to another level. Um, and every year I'm just trying to keep improving on that. All right, our next question is from David Eichholt. Yes, yeah, CJ, you've played in plenty of high profile games uh, last season. And you know, this first big game this season, but I mean, you guys have Patrick Keegan who have come along as two young contributors. What's the best piece of advice you give them heading into their first real high profile primetime matchup? Yeah, you know, it's just trusting your work. Um, 
both of them are guys that have played against really good competition. Um, they're playing with us in practice every day um, and they both work extremely hard. So um, at the end of the day, it's just trusting your work and going out there and believing in what you can do. John Sears, our next question. Yes, yeah, CJ, uh, you guys have uh, you know read all the articles preseason hype for you guys are ranked third now. Um, are you guys ready to, as the competition ramps up and steps up, ready to ready to face the better competition to maybe see where you're at as well early in the season? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, these these big time games early on really uh, they help you to see where you're at. Um, and we have a great opportunity tomorrow night to go out there and show what we really can do. Um, and I think we're all really excited for the opportunity. Scott Docterman. Yeah, CJ, is there a, does this kind of bum you out a little bit that this would have been a sold out game? You would have had a raucous arena um, like any of the ones late last year. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is there kind of like this consternation or uh, aggravation that you're not going to be able to play this game in front of a full arena? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously um, with the hype on this game, um, I know Carver for sure would have been rocking tomorrow and it would have been a lot of fun. Um, but with the circumstances this year, obviously that's um, not able to happen. So we really just got to lock in and we have to communicate um, on both ends of the floor tomorrow. We got to be loud and we got to bring a lot of energy. Along those lines, I mean, the crowd can kind of help boost, you know, a team like that, especially because they're going to go on a run at some point. They're too good of a team. Um, how do you help boost your own energy as a unit, even when you don't, when you don't have fans that are like that? Yeah, like I said earlier, just communicating, um, being loud, engaged together on defense and on offense. Um, and just like you, like you said, you know, there's going to be runs. Uh, you just got to withstand the storm and stay together. John Sears. Yeah, CJ, as the, the competition ramps up, um, it's, expected that Luke is going to get doubled and his numbers aren't going to be, he's not going to be putting up 35 to 40 every game. Um, it's going to open up for you guys as more. Uh, do you take it on upon yourself as maybe one of the veterans now to, to say, Hey, we got to step up our game. Luke is not going to be able to put up, you know, 40 points every game. Yeah. You know, um, obviously going forward, we know that Luke is going to be a really high mark on the scouting report. Um, we got a lot of guys that can, uh, that can play too. Um, and I think, I think we're going to be just fine. You know, we're just going to play our game. Um, we're going to take open shots when they're there, and we're going to make plays when we have to. Our next question comes from Mark Emmert. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, CJ, uh, kind of a similar question. I guess you, Jabo, and Joe have been a little bit quiet those first three games, and obviously you guys didn't need to do a lot. But were you kind of waiting for a game like this, do you think, for you guys to start uh, being a little bit more assertive on offense? Mm, I mean, yeah, but – you know, in those games, the, like the game plan was always just getting it down to Luca. Uh, we knew we had a mismatch down there, um, and that, that was our game plan. So it, we're not guys that are going to hunt shots. We're not guys that are looking to get 20 a game. You know, we're guys that just want to win. Um, and at the end of the day, we have an opportunity tomorrow um, to win. And at the end of the day, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go out there and try to win. Go back to Scott Dockerman. You know, through the flow of the offense, you guys usually, you guys are one of the best in the country at, at efficiency and, and moving the ball around. Um, when you have a, uh, you know, but you've, you've, and now you're adding a few more pieces, whether it's uh, Jack coming back off the injury. You're also got um, Patrick, who's a part of the offense and Keegan. Is there an, an, an interest, a heightened interest just to see how you guys all play together against a pretty high caliber opponent? Um, especially in critical moments of the game? Yeah, um, of course. You know, like I said earlier, um, it's just a great opportunity to, um, to play a great team tomorrow to see where we're at. Um, I think Coach mentioned earlier, um, just putting guys in together, uh, seeing where we stand. Um, we're really, we're all excited to just uh, have this opportunity tomorrow. Next question comes from Mike Hloss. What do you think of their guards, Love and Davis and the others you've seen? Yeah, you know, uh, watching the film, you know, they're really quick guards. Um, they can score it. They're versatile. Um, they're long. Um, I think they're really nice players. So, you know, we're definitely going to have to be able to – we're going to keep them in, keep them in front of us um, and just make them take tough shots. Our next question, David Eicholt. Go ahead, David. Yes, yeah, CJ, we haven't got a chance to talk to you since Jack returned to the team. I mean, how satisfying was – I know how close you two are. How satisfying was it for you to see him go out and have – 
performance that he did uh, against Western Illinois? And just what's it been like just to have him back in the rotation, back with the team? It's so awesome to have him back. Um, I think the common theme in the locker room after the game was it really wasn't about how we played as a team. It's just how we were all so happy for Jack um, to be out there and just playing the game he loves. And obviously he played so well. Um, but like I said, we were so happy for him. And as a team, we're just so happy to have him back. Um, he's a leader on this team. He's a, he's a great guy in the locker room, obviously a great friend of mine. Um, we're just extremely excited to have him back. All right, any further questions for CJ before we let him go here? All right, thank you, CJ, for your time today. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Our next player will be Luca Garza. All right, Luca, good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, thanks for joining us today. We'll get right to our questions. Our first question comes from David, David Eichold. Yeah, Luca, thinking back to the Purdue game last year, I remember after the game you talked about how you needed to go out there, rebound the way they did, hustle the way they did. Uh, and it was one of those just, I think, after moments in the game where you just knew that you guys got out hustled. Looking at this North Carolina team, they're probably maybe the best rebounding team in the country. I know you guys emphasize rebounding, but do you kind of channel what you remember from, you know, those past games from last season uh, into this season and how important is rebounding in this matchup specifically? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think you look at, you know, look at North Carolina, you look at Purdue, they're both teams that you know, get a lot of their points you know, off offensive rebounds. And, you know, like you said, UNC is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. You know, they have a collection of bigs. Uh, they're great at getting to the glass and getting second opportunities for their team. Um, and that's how they beat teams. So for us, you know, it's, it's a big focus. You know, we know if we win the war on the boards, uh, we're going to win the game. So, you know, it, it's something that we have to focus on. we got to make sure that we go out there and rebound as best we can. we got to block those guys out. And they're relentless. And um, so, you know, I think, you know, we, we have to try as best as we can to, you know, back the box out every time there's a shot taken and, and try to get some rebounds and, and attack them on the offensive glass. And, uh, you know, it's the biggest part of this game for us is, is stopping their uh, offensive rebounding and their transition. Those are the, the main two focuses. That's how they beat teams. Um, so that's that's the focus for us going into this game. All right, John Sears, go ahead. Yeah, Luca, um, you guys kind of cruised through those first three games as, as expected, but now the competition ramps up. Does it feel like this is a chance for you guys to really kind of uh, not only see where you're at, but maybe prove to yourselves as well that, hey, you know, we're, we're here this year and we we belong where we're at at number three in the country? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, we treat every game the same. So we go into every game you know, trying to be our best selves and then play as best as we can. Um, so we're very excited about the opportunity to play against, you know, the number 14 team in the country in, in North Carolina. So everybody's really excited um, and, and we're pumped up. We know this is an opportunity for us, um, you know, to show some people you know, what we're about. And I think it goes both ways. I think they're looking at it like this as well. So, you know, it's an exciting game. Um, and we're just, you know, focused on you know, winning every single day and, and then just improving and make sure we put our best foot forward tomorrow. All right. Further questions for Luca? Go ahead, uh, C.L. Brown. Hi, Luca. This is C.L. Brown with the Raleigh News and Observer. Um, Carolina uses basically a rotation of four different bigs. Um, I know in today's basketball, a lot of times you'll face teams that go small a lot. I was wondering if there's anybody comparable, maybe in the Big Ten or elsewhere that you guys have played, who could potentially throw as many as four different guys on you to defend. 
You know, I think this game, you know, is definitely unique with, you know, the versatility of their bigs and how many bigs they do have in, in their depth. Um, I definitely think there are a couple teams in, in the Big Ten. You know, you look at Illinois with Kofi and, and coming off the bench with Georgie. Uh, you got Purdue, who has uh, that 7-4 that uh, freshman coming off the bench, as well as Travion Williams. And, and, and they've been very deep in the past with their bigs. Um, but I don't think, you know, there's a team with, you know, four – you know, six eleven plus who are all relentless on the glass. You know, I don't think we've seen a team like that in the Big Ten uh, you know, this year. Um, so it's it's very exciting for me. You know, I love playing against the best players, and I think these this group of bigs is is tremendous. You know, you got Garrison Brooks who is is the leader of them, um, and I think he's a great player. You know, we we were in high school around the same time, so uh, you know it's been fun seeing him develop there at Carolina, and he's gotten you know so much better over the years, and and it's going to be a fun matchup and. Armando Baycott, he's kind of from my area, um, and I, I played with him before uh, on the AAU circuit. Uh, he was a great below me, but he's he's also relentless and a very skilled post player. And then you got those two freshmen, you know, Sharp and Kessler. I think those guys are really, really good, um, and they have a lot of potential. And they're just, you know, like I said, all of them are relentless on the glass. And that's our biggest focus for this, for, for this game is to slow them down um, in terms of rebounding. If I could ask one follow, you you know pretty much the scouting report already. Is that something? Um, how how far ahead did you look at these guys, or did you just know them? You know, through the course, you're just a basketball guy, and you already knew them. You know, I'm a basketball guy. You know, I've, I've watched I watch their games on TV, um, but also we know them from the scouting report as well. Um, and we're all you know locked into this team, and, and we're focused on you know just going out there, being prepared, uh, but playing our best. And I think. You know, some of those guys I've known before, um, like I said, uh, from when I was in high school and playing against them. Um, but, you know, I'm just definitely, you know, we focus every game the same way and we're very locked in. All right, David Eichold. Yeah, Luca, last year, obviously, a lot of the talk about you was the growth you had in the inner game and the mental game aspect of it. Let me see if I can phrase this right. Heading into this season and everything do you still get drive from people doubting you or is it just what you expect out of yourself and if both how do you kind of balance that um you know I think there's no one uh who's more critical of me than myself uh so I think I hold myself to a very high standard um but you know I think anytime there's doubters it's definitely motivation for myself and I think you know it's 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 something that's I understand because it's always been there uh for me as a player so um, it's nothing new to me uh, to have doubters and, and whatever the case may be. So, you know, for me, it's just, you know, it's a lot of motivation, but I go out there every single day. I play as hard as I can, you know, in practice and games, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, but mentally, I'm, I'm very focused on, you know, this group and what, what I want our team to achieve. And, um, you know, I can't worry about all the other stuff if, if, if I really want, you know, our team to succeed, succeed and, and our team to win. So, Scott Docterman. Yeah, I have kind of two different questions. Uh, one is last year, you were, uh, whenever you played another big, um, you used your versatility kind of to, to negate in some ways their advantage. I, I think of uh, Kofi, you know, from Illinois that you were bringing them out because you could shoot over him. Uh, you know, do you anticipate having to use every single part of your game in this one, knowing that you're going to be facing several different bigs that have different types of games themselves? You know, definitely. I think you got to read the defense, and you got to be able to read an attack and know what you got to do um, to score on the floor. And I think this team is very strong in the paint. Um, so if that means, you know, sometimes I got to score in the paint, and sometimes I got to score from the outside, I'm going to do that. Um, so you know, the whole time I'll just be reading the defense and how they guard me, um, and, and make sure I just get to different spots. And I, I feel very confident in the spot on the floor. Um, so you know, I'm going to try to you know move around and make it hard for them you know to deal with me. And I think our team will do that as well. Um, but, you know, I, I go into every game with that, you know, kind of mentality. It's just I'm just going to use my advantages, you know, whether it's I'm bigger than the guy so I can score in the post or, you know, the guy's a little bit bigger than me, um, so I got to take him outside. So I think I'm just reading, um, you know, what they're going to do. Um, but, you know, I'm excited for this matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, competing against those bigs. How instrumental is Jack Nungy going to be in this game just because of, again, even though you have other advantages, that one is a potential disadvantage when it's one on four, but you know, how's he going to help impact the game positively for Iowa? Yeah, I think it's going to be huge. You know, obviously, you know, we'll see, you know, me and him out there on the floor together and that just helps our team and changes our team. Um, and, and 
his ability to rebound um, and, and, and get on the glass is going to help us a lot, especially when we're facing a team that, that thrives off second chance opportunities. We need another big in there who can help, you know, box out. And I think, you know, he's going to come off the bench and do his thing. Um, and, and I'm very excited for him. Um, and I know he's going to focus hard and, and, and do it the best he can. But, you know, we're definitely a different team when we have two bigs on the floor and I will be able to match up to them you know, even better. Um, but I think, you know, whether it's Connor out there or me out there, we're all going to go to the glass with everything we got because we know that's that's the focus of this game. Any further questions for uh, Luca? All right. Luca, thanks for your time today. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Thank you. The final player will be Joe Tucson. All right, Joe, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Good afternoon. All right, we'll get right to uh, questions for Joe Tucson. Go ahead, uh, John Sears. Yeah, Joe, how much are you looking forward to this matchup now that the competition ramps up from the first three games, and this is really going to be on a kind of a national spotlight for you guys? Uh, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I feel like our whole team is excited. Uh, we, you know, we prepare for this and uh, we're preparing today for it. I think we're ready for it and uh, we're just ready to uh, step up to the challenge and live up to the hype. David Eichholt. Yeah, Joe, you got to go against R.J. Davis a few times in high school, if I can recall correctly. What's the, uh, what's the relationship like between the two of you and can you give us a brief scouting report on what he brings to the table? Uh, RJ, he's, he's my friend, you know, he's my buddy. Uh, I knew him. I knew him for a long time. Um, nice kid. You know, uh, he went to step in. Like, I went to Connell Hayes. We beat him. I, I believe we beat him more times, uh, since I've been there, but since I left, they beat us every time. 
And um, a scouting report on RJ, uh, very crafty, can shoot the ball, uh, scoring mentality. He's just very smooth and very, you know, crisp with his handles. He's very creative. Um, you know, he's just a he's a skilled player. He's a very skilled player, very skilled. Mark Emmert. Yeah, Joe, you're about to go against a, a few pretty elite point guards here this month. I guess what does that mean to you as a competitor, especially on the defensive end? How do you take that uh, challenge? Um, you know, I'm just ready to play. To be honest with you, I don't take it any way. You know, I don't, I don't take it personal. I don't, you know, I'm just ready to play. I'm ready to win. You know, and I'm, that's why I'm here. I'm here to win. So, ready to get the W. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Joe. As as the competition ramps up, uh, pretty obvious that you know Luca's number is probably going to come back down to earth a little bit. You know, uh, just judging by the competition, that's going to open things up probably for the guards. Do you guys on the outside in the perimeter um, looking forward to that, and you know maybe making more plays for yourself and having to create yourself? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, there's definitely you know his number is definitely going to go down because you know a lot of teams are playing you know better teams now and they're going to double him and stuff. But we're all you know we're all we're all ready to, you know, shoot the ball. We're all ready to make plays for each other, make plays for uh, ourselves. And, you know, we're just ready to go. Our next question comes from Mark Emmert. Yeah, Joe, can you maybe uh, explain to us, uh, I guess, your evolution as a defensive player in your couple of years here? How are you better now maybe than you were when you first arrived? Um, well, now I watch a lot of film, especially, uh, you know, uh, before each game, like two or three days before the game, I watch film on that team. Um, like a lot, like right before I go to bed, when I wake up, uh, before practice, after practice, I just watch film on like the guards that I have to guard, you know, seeing what's their favorite moves, you know, seeing which way they like to go left or right. Um, you know, I'm going to play them in the ball screen action. Uh, if I could bait them to do something I want them to do, you know, just little things like that, just to, uh, you know, help me during the game. Uh, David Eichholt. Yeah, Joe, quick two-parter. One, I know we haven't gotten the chance to talk to you since Jack returned to the team when he dropped 18 points the other night. Just how happy were you for him? And then the second part of that, just what is his size and his rebounding ability going to bring to the table? Because North Carolina looks like they might be the best rebounding team in the country. Uh, uh, first off, I was very happy for Jack. Um, I talked to him after the game, and uh, he, he was, you know, he was it was tears of joy and uh, of him missing his father. But um, I, I, like, told him, you know, like, we need you, and I thought like you did a really good job, you know, today out on the court, and uh, you know your dad would be proud of you. And uh, you know, we were just—it it was a happy moment for me, and you know, just because you know I know the feeling and stuff, and just to be there for him, you know, uh, I'll always be there for Jack or anybody on the team, you know, uh, just to you know have a little brother here. And and um, second question, can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, it was just basically, what does he bring to the table, especially in this matchup where North Carolina might be the best rebounding team in the country? Um, he just brings a lot. You know, he's a big body, rebounds the ball, he stretches the floor, um, he runs the floor. I just feel like it's going to be a great matchup. You know, we're, we're going to be a great matchup for them when Jack is definitely in the game. Mark Emmer. Yeah, Joe, a, a little different topic here. I, I know you've spent some time around Roderick Bins. I just wondered if you, know, you could tell me, you know, what he means to you, what, what he's, how he's helped you here as, a, as an athlete. Um, he was – at first, I didn't really – I was kind of quiet towards him. Well, towards everybody, you know, I was kind of to myself. But then as, you know, the year went on, you know, I started talking to him a little more and more. And, uh, you know, we just compared in, like, little ways and stuff. And he's just, you know, he's just knowing, like, he's always there for me. And I can, like, talk to him whenever, you know, I need somebody to talk to. Just knowing that I have him, you know, it's really good. All right, further questions for Joe? Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Joe, for your time today. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate you joining in today. We'll see, hopefully, see most of you tomorrow evening.